I'm here in Da Nang, fifth biggest city in the country, growing economically at 20% a year. Great for local manufacture and the best road system in the country. But the real big story here is tourism and what's going on in China Beach. Da Nang is 600 miles north of Ho Chi Minh City and nearly 500 miles south of Hanoi. A port city is the largest city in central Vietnam, with mountains on one side and the South China Sea on the other. Nam Hai, Vietnam's premier luxury resort, is set on 31 hectares. This place has received international recognition for its design and is right on China Beach. And Peter, you've done a lot of stuff in the last few years down here. So, I mean, I, I, even from first coming here myself 10 years ago, I mean, it's transforming beyond belief. I mean, why is this so attractive? I mean, why is everyone kind of coming here and building along this beach line here? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, it is, you've got 40 kilometers of, I mean, really some of the very best beach in the whole world. Uh, uh, you know, when I first came here 18 years ago, um, I just fell in love with the place, okay? And I said, you know, this is, this is going to be an amazing luxury destination at some point in time. So, yes, I mean, as we sit here today, we've got close to a half a billion dollars uh, invested or, or in the pipeline um, yeah. for the project, uh, for various projects. We and there's own. no stopping it? I mean, you know, the money's coming in, people are buying these places and... Well, you know, look at this place. You know, when we, uh, you know, when we launched uh, Nam Hai, okay, we initially priced uh, the one-bedroom villas here, for example, at $250,000, okay? Uh, the last one just traded for $1.2 million. Wow. Okay, that's, that's over about a four-year period. Okay, obviously, integrated resort, great beach. You're doing a lot more down the coastline. I think we need to get in and have a look at these places and, you know, let's get a sense of the place here. Yeah? Sure. And in order to create the perception that this area can be a regional tourist destination, a golf course was created with the help of top pro Colin Montgomery. Nearby, new villas are also being built. OK, so and you're going to build villas here, right? So when does all that happen? Well, we've actually got the first two villas uh, built um, down off in that direction. Um, the plan is to do about 60 um, okay. to sell them uh, along with the memberships for the golf course. So how do you see the trend here? I mean, obviously, buying a place on a golf course anywhere in the world is getting more and more expensive. You've got a great climate down here. You know, a lot of foreigners watching this in countries all around the world. So why would they be buying here? Is it cheaper? Is it, is it better? Well, to begin with, okay, our principal market for these villas um, is going to be local. Yep. Okay, uh, golf, uh, you know, much as it did in Japan 50 years ago, Korea 30 years ago, Thailand 20 years ago, yeah. has just exploded here. Yeah. There's still, I think, less than 20 golf courses. Yeah. Um, we're actually the largest owner of golf courses in Vietnam. We've owned, we own three. Okay. We built one, this one we acquired two. But um, um, so locally, golf has become extremely popular. Um, golf villas is a new concept for the market. So we also anticipate being able to sell, I would say, you know, say, somewhere around a third to uh, offshore investors, similar to the Canadian Are they going to see some growth, you think? I mean, in terms of what they're going to be paying for these things as foreigners? Absolutely. OK, so foreigners can buy these and uh, they potentially fantastic yeah, returns. Yeah, absolutely can. I mean, they can enter into a long-term leasehold. Yeah. You know, uh, we can sell freehold to, to local buyers. OK, you know. great. So my recommendation to the foreigner is actually to, you know, come marry a Vietnamese woman. Oh, well, you did. And, <laughs> and, then, and then buy up a couple of villas and own a tree, hold a tree. And make sure you don't get divorced and lose it all. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> OK, great. Let's play some more golf. <laughs> Too much talk of property. <laughs> nice shot. And there's more. Close by, there's another residential project similar to Nam Hai, which will feature 400 modern rooms, including condos and villas, which will be run by the highest hotel group. And who's buying the units from you? You've got condos. Are the same kind of people that bought you at the Nam Hai or yeah. different No, no, that's a, that's a really good question. And in fact, we've seen sort of a sea change um, in our clientele. OK, Nam Hai, 40 villas. First 36 were all sold to foreigners. The last couple have gone to locals. Come to Hyatt three years later, 95% of our buyers are local. 
Okay. Yeah. Mostly coming out of Hanoi, some out of Saigon, a few local, local Denam. But you've had a, an enormous amount of wealth creation here. Yeah. That's very interesting. So it just shows that the money that's being made domestically is what's driving the market here. It's not just about tourism, but I mean, these people are coming here actually buying units. Yeah, no, absolutely. And absolutely, you know, and, and using them. I mean, or, or using them for investment. Um, however, you know, we have retained the same uh, foreign investment structure that we had at Nam Hai. Okay, we're 10 minutes down the road from the Nam Hai. The weather's turned a bit. I'm here with Cathy McConkie, who runs this development here. So, where are we? You're in the wonderful ancient town of Hoi An, on Life Resort Hoi An property. Well, it is. I mean, I have to say, it's a bit of a rhetorical question. I've been here seven or eight times myself. I actually brought my mom here a few years ago, and she went swimming with the elephants and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. um, this is where it kind of all began for tourism. Is it getting sort of dragged down to Da Nang now? We've seen all the development down there, or is it still here? Uh, Hoi An will still be very special. It's still a unique place in Vietnam. It's in between the two cities of Ho Chi Minh and Hanoi, and it's just got that special charm about it. Um, yeah, Da Nang will definitely, definitely develop and has beautiful beachfront properties developing there, but Hoi An still has its special um, feel to it. It's quite yeah. unique. It's like the old postcard Vietnam. I think you're right, and hopefully that's the way it's going to stay. I mean, I love this place. Well, I think it will be protected, so it will stay like this. Um, I don't think anyone wants to lose its charm. Hoi An has its own charm, so no one wants to change it dramatically, so it will stay. I know what you're thinking. I've turned over. This must be a James Bond movie. Well, A, I'm not Sean Connery or Brit Eklund, and B, this isn't the Caribbean. This is Fantiet, about two and a half hours' drive from Ho Chi Minh City. An absolutely wondrous beach. I'm actually here with Jackie Gurr, who's developing a project in this part of the world. Can I have my shirt back? <laughs> Thank you. Jackie, what's so special about this area? What's so special about this area, Tim? Well, apart from its 21 kilometres of beautiful beaches, it's the closest international beach destination to Ho Chi Minh City. And Ho Chi Minh City at the moment, you know, 8 million people. Uh, it's got an emerging middle class Vietnamese and a growing number of expats who are living and working in Vietnam, and this is where they love to come for the weekend. Phan Thiet is a seaside village best known for fishing and the production of lukma, a fish sauce used in many dishes around Asia. It's also one of the driest areas in the country, and an estimated 70% of the country's resorts are located in this area. Those looking to invest in property can expect to pay 1,200 to 2,500 US dollars a square metre, which is 50 to 70% cheaper than what can be found in Ho Chi Minh City. OK, so I've seen a lot of Asian resorts over the years, and everyone always tries to convince me this is the next big thing. I mean, what, you know, what makes this so special for you? Well, I think, I mean, if you look at Vietnam, Vietnam's got such a strong cultural heritage, and I think that's what attracts um, you know, a lot of the tourists here. It does have such a diverse culture. Um, and if you look at this place, I mean, it's probably 10, 15 years uh, behind, you know, Bali. Um, if, you, if you're looking at a place to compare it to, you know, it's probably 10, 15 years behind. And that's what I like about this area at the moment. Yeah. It's not overly developed. It's still got that sleepy, you know, seaside fishing village feel to it. She's also building several villas along this beautiful stretch of beach. Fantastic. So where did you find, how did you find this place then? Well, my family used to come down here um, before the war. It's just got such a fabulous beach and coastline along here, so they used to come down here a lot. So talk us through what we're seeing here. OK, so as I mentioned before, Tim, you know, we've designed the whole resort around family. Um, so it's very family orientated. All of our apartments and townhouses here have self-contained kitchenettes and we've tried to accommodate for you know, both comfort and style whilst taking into account relaxation and interaction within all the, the apartments and townhouses. So we've got two apartment towers here, 52 apartments in each tower, and then we've got 23 townhouses spread throughout the resort, and then we've got the food and beverage facilities over this site. And while it all sounds and looks good, this being Vietnam, there are definitely some things to watch out for. I think, you know, there's things like lack of transparency still. So even though the regulatory framework has improved and they've introduced, you know, some real estate laws which has, you know, um, increased FDI and made it easier to, for foreigners to buy and own property as well as overseas Vietnamese, you know, I still think there's a lack of transparency within the system and just the length and time, you know, to get approvals through, you know, things like that have really caused, um, caused delays on projects.
OK, that's it for Vietnam. I'm going to try some fishing local style in this wicker conical. Join me next week for more Buy in Asia. All right, boys, you can reel me in now. Hey, what are you doing? Reel me in. Next week on Buying Asia, I'm off to Shanghai, where I'll be looking at a new development that could just as well be in suburban USA. Yes, I really, really am in Shanghai. Plus, I'll look at the renovation going on in old villas. This is the future here. Um, this market, this is on the market for over 10 million US right now. Geo. Older districts and in historic buildings across the city. We're seeing the old Shanghai style homes, but yet new, brand new grade A. Until then, this is Tim Murphy signing off on Buying Asia, one brick at a time. <laughs>